The top stories tonight in Y News. Postponing the 2022 national elections is not in the hands of Malacanang and President Rodrigo Duterte is not interested in extending his term. Meanwhile, the president is expected to give an address later tonight. The president is not interested in extending his term and he leaves it to um, the Filipino people, the sovereign people, to decide if they want to amend the constitution to postpone the elections. The Metro Manila Council recommends the extension of general community quarantine in Metro Manila for the month of October. Vice President Lenny Robredo also lays out her recommendations on the country's fight against COVID-19. Hindi birong tungkulin ang agarang pagbabakuna sa milyon-milyong Pilipino. Kailangan ng plano, infrastruktura at mekanismo na hanggat maaari ay maibaba sa antas ng mga barangay health unit. Hospitals must be ready to further increase their bed allocation for COVID-19 cases, the Department of Health says. At the end of general community quarantine status in Metro Manila nears, the Department of Trade and Industry is in favor of shifting to modified general community quarantine. The only thing that we'd like to change really is the easing up or reopening of more uh, sectors for the workers because I'm just concerned on the on the uh, poverty, also on the hunger, para po may trabaho mga kapapayat. People in England who refuse to self-isolate when told to will face fines of up to 10,000 pounds. And Australia pledges to share with the world any discoveries and breakthroughs made in its three local COVID-19 vaccine trials. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, September 28, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide with the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, postponing the 2022 national elections is not in the hands of Malacanang and President Rodrigo Duterte is not interested in extending his term. Our palace correspondent Rosalie Coz tells us why. After the issue on the proposal to postpone the 2022 national elections due to the coronavirus pandemic became controversial, Malacanang reiterated that President Rodrigo Duterte is not interested in extending his term. It was Pampanga Representative Mikey Arroyo who started the issue when he asked the Commission on Elections if it is considering the postponement scenario because COVID-19 vaccine might not be available by 2022 and there will be intense risk of virus transmission. Mission. The president is not interested in extending his term and he leaves it to um, the Filipino people, the sovereign people, to decide if they want to amend the constitution to postpone the elections. The palace official adds it can never be an option for the palace to postpone and reschedule the 2022 national elections. It is not possible unless the Philippine constitution is amended. The constitution states that the regular election for the president, vice president, senators and house of representatives shall be conducted on the second Monday of May. Meanwhile, the palace lets the Commission on Elections decide on what system it will implement for the 2022 national elections as the country faces the health crisis. In particular are the proposals to conduct mail-in voting like in other countries. The decision lies with the COMELEC at hindi po namin pinapangunahan ng COMELEC. Pero as I said, baka kailangan po yung pamamaraan ng pag-conduct ng eleksyon. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, has no plans of postponing the 2022 polls unless provided by the law. And Filipinos are encouraged to register to be eligible to vote as early as now. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. The Commission on Elections does not see any good reasons why the May 9, 2022 elections should be rescheduled. Although according to COMELEC Chairperson Sherif Abbas, it is difficult to rule out its postponement because it is allowed by law. Based on the 1987 Constitution, the regular schedule for national elections should be held on the second Monday of May unless provided by the law. Such occurrence may only happen if two-thirds of the House of Representatives and Senate vote for it. Magkaka problema pa din siya, sabi ko nga doon sa isang provision na mag end lahat ng term ng incumbents on June 30. But as to pwedeng extend, pwede because under the constitution nilagay niyo mismo unless otherwise provided for by law. COMELEC spokesman James Jimenez, on the other hand, says they are already expecting the pandemic to prevail until 2022 and they are continuously preparing for it. For now, they encourage those who are already eligible to vote to register as early as possible. Since the voter registration started this month, there is a very low turnout of the registration with only about 250,000 applicants nationwide. The commission also advises the applicants to set an appointment before going to the local COMELEC office to register. Pwede silang tumawag sa COMELEC office mismo kung saan sila magpaparehistro. Pwede rin silang mag-text para makausap nila yung mga tiganan doon. Ano? At uh, through text, doon sila magpapalitan ng information para maset yung kanilang appointment. And online, of course, pangkaraniwang ginagamit natin dyan ay yung uh, social media platforms kung saan pwede nilang i-private message yung mga iba't ibang opisina. COMELEC also assures that its social media accounts are verified and secure for safety. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Malacanang is unsure if President Rodrigo Duterte's public address expected later tonight would include the new quarantine classifications in the country for the month of October. Before the President delivers his address, the Interagency Task Force against COVID-19 will conduct its regular meeting. The government's new quarantine rules will be based on data on new COVID-19 cases in two weeks compared with prior two weeks, as well as on other social factors. The month-long quarantine statuses in parts of the country will expire on a on September 30 of Wednesday. Sana po, hindi ko lang sigurado, no? Meron po kasing address sa, sa taong bayan na ating Pangulo mamayang gabi. So sana po yung classification eh, mapasama na sa kanyang uh, address. Meanwhile, a hospital in San Fernando City, Pampanga, will temporarily stop processing swab samples in its own PCR laboratory. Our Pampanga correspondent, Leslie Huidem, details why. Green City Medical Center's COVID PCR laboratory has recently undergone evaluation by the Department of Health and Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, or RITM. It has been found out through an investigation that there was an instance of an error in the result of COVID tests. May mali. The reason why RITM, together with DOH, uh, recommended the temporary suspension of Green City Molecular Lab in the processing of PCR tests for COVID was because they found out that there was a um, lapses on their procedure okay. and uh, it was found out that uh, there was uh, an instance wherein a particular batch was uh, contaminated that resulted to a false positive no, uh, result. DOH and RITM are giving Green City ample time to improve its PCR laboratory and adhere to protocols and have its lab personnel undergo more training. The laboratory will stop processing swab test requests, but in the meantime, will continue to accept and facilitate send out patients for swabbing, both admitted and outpatients, but a different laboratory will process the samples. Green City vows to strive to improve patients' confidence in its credibility.
Leslie Widem, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Metro Manila Council recommends the extension of the general community quarantine status in Metro Manila until October. Meanwhile, Vice President Lenny Robredo also lays out her recommendations on the country's fight against COVID-19. Joining us tonight is Vincent Arboleda to tell us why live. Yes, Vincent. Arlene, the Metro Manila mayors want to be cautious when it comes to relaxing the quarantine status of the national capital region. In his social media post, Mayor Francis Zamora said the mayors of Metro Manila want to keep the NCR under GCQ while balancing health and economy. But according to NMDA General Manager Jojo Garcia, it is still up to the Interagency Task Force against COVID-19 to decide the quarantine status of Metro Manila. Although NMDA General Manager Jojo Garcia did not deny nor confirm the statement of the mayor, Garcia still agrees that health and economy must be balanced. Hindi pwede mag-concentrate tayo sa health, hindi rin pwede mag-concentrate tayo sa economy. No? Kaya nga sabi nga ni Secretary Mon Lopez, we should balance it. No? And health and economy should be side by side. No? One of the factors for the decision to keep the downtrend of the COVID-19 in NCR. Experts from the UP Octa research team also agrees with the recommendation saying that the positivity rate of COVID-19 cases must be decreased first before relaxing the status. We still have 1,000 cases per day and we still have a high occupancy sa hospitals. In fact, may mga LGUs, may mga hospitals na puno pa rin yung uh, bed space nila. Until mapababa natin yung number of cases and hopefully mapababa natin yung positivity rate to around 5%. Harleen Dr. Tony Liachon, former advisor to the National Task Force against COVID-19, also added that the 10% positivity rate is still high compared to the less than 5% recommended by the World Health Organization. Uh, Vincent, he also monitored Vice President Lenny Robredo's recommendations on fighting the COVID-19 pandemic after Malacanang told her to present her recommendations. Could you tell us the details? Arlene, the Vice President uh, gave her five points which include setting a clear goal that is achievable or a smart goal. VP Lenny says the SMART goal must be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. The Vice President says this is based on the Lancet study which classifies the Philippines as a moderate transmission. Hindi mahirap itakda ang mga layuning ito. Halimbawa, alinsunod sa international standards, pwedeng targetin na bago matapos ang Oktubre, mas mababa na sa 5% ang positivity rate at siguraduhin hindi lalampas sa one ang reproduction rate ng virus. Arlene, the Vice President adds that the government must also plan on how to properly allocate the 1.5 billion peso local government support fund under the Bayanihan II. VP Robredo says that she agrees with the administration on the importance of the vaccine. That is why she believes that preparations must be done and not just wait until the vaccine arrives. Hindi birong tungkulin ang agarang pagbabakuna sa milyon-milyong Pilipino. Kailangan ng plano, infrastruktura at mekanismo na hanggat maaari ay maibaba sa antas ng mga barangay health unit. Arlene? Uh, Vincent, you've mentioned about properly allocating funds for the uh, LGU. Does the Vice President have some recommendations on how this can be done? According to VP Lenny, the government can rack the LGUs according to their situation, whether they are high risk, low risk, or having no transmission. With that, the government can now act on what place needs to strengthen their testing capacity, which place needs to have a more aggressive contact tracing capability, or which place needs more isolation facilities. Along with that is the corresponding fund needed to implement those. VP Robredo mentioned that she believes in the good intention of the administration and the government and those in the uh, position, but still a good strategy is still needed to effectively fight COVID-19. 
Vice President also says that she does not want the government to fail in its efforts against COVID-19 because every Filipino will be affected when that happens. Setting aside politics, VP Robredo says she is willing to work with the administration and she and share her information and technology on effectively fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Back to you, Harry. All right, thank you so much, Vincent Arboleda, for that report. Meanwhile, the Department of Health says that 3,073 new cases were reported today across the country, with the National Capital Region reporting the most additional cases with 1,158. Now, the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines have reached 307,288, but the total active cases have gone down to more than 49,000 or 16% of the total confirmed cases, of which 86.4% are in mild condition, while 8.7% are asymptomatic. We have lost 37 more patients. But through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 163 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total recoveries nationwide to 252,665. That is 82.2% of the total confirmed cases in the country. Thanks be to God. Meanwhile, the global death toll from COVID-19 nears 1 million as of today. More than 5,000 death cases linked to COVID-19 in different countries has been reported since yesterday. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of over 33.1 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions, and sovereignties, while close to 23 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection. Thanks be to God. The health department has seen a downward trend in COVID-19 cases in the country in the past days. But this is not a reason to be complacent, it says. Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, explains why. Until Sunday, it had been six days of less than 3,000 single-day COVID-19 cases in the country. According to Department of Health spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Berjere, they are seeing a downward trend of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines. We look at the trends, no? Nung ating mga averages per week. Pakikita natin, no? Bumababa. Nakikita natin, nagli-less than uh, bumababa tayo, tayo ng around 1,000 to 1,200 uh, cases na, no? Comparing to the previews. Pero makikita pa rin natin na may mga lugar pa rin na merong mga uh, piling pagtaas nitong mga number of cases. The downward trend also shows a good indication that from a danger zone last August, the country now has just moderate transmission of COVID-19, especially in the national capital region. The critical care utilization rate in the NCR has gone down to 60% from 81%. Critical care utilization rate is the use of ICU beds, COVID-19 wards, bed hospitals, and ventilator facilities compared with the number of COVID-19 patients who need critical care. Meanwhile, treatment czar Leopoldo Vega says the recalibration of strategies and the help of local governments in contact tracing and isolation of COVID-19 patients contribute to the prevention of coronavirus transmission. Malaking bahagi talaga sa pagsumpo ng COVID-19 ay yung public health measures. At saka makikita mo naman dito, lalong-lalo na sa Metro Manila, na pag ang LGU naman talaga ay aggressive sa testing, isolation at tracing ng mga positive COVID trials, at laki ho ng pagbabago. Despite the downward trend, the health department says there is still no room for complacency. The DOH also highlights that physical distancing in crowded places prevents 82% COVID-19 transmission according to a study. Also, under Secretary Verher reveals that although a downward trend in cases has been observed in cases, the case doubling time and the mortality doubling time are now longer at more than 10 days. These are not the only factors to decide on whether to ease community quarantine restrictions in the country. The Interagency Task Force now considers attack rate and growth curve as part of their recommendations to President Rodrigo Duterte on which quarantine statuses must be implemented. Two weeks, we compare the number of cases from the previous two weeks. Dito, nakikita natin 
kung paano yung increase in the number of cases. But at the same time, we also analyzed this together with the critical care utilization. Pag nakita natin na hindi makakaaga pa yung isang lugar, in spite na mababa pa lang ang kaso o hindi ganun kadami ang increase, meron ding times na magdidesisyon ng IATF na itataas. The DOH reminds the public to be vigilant and more responsible while there's still no cure against COVID-19. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health says that hospitals must be ready to further increase their bed allocation for COVID-19 cases. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. Government and private hospitals, especially in Metro Manila, are now compliant with the minimum bed allocation for COVID-19 cases. Based on the record of the One Hospital Command Center or OHCC, government or public hospitals now have about 30 to 32 percent bed capacity for COVID-19 patients, while private ones have already complied with about 20 percent bed allocation. But according to Health Undersecretary and Treatment Czar Dr. Leopoldo Vega, hospitals should be ready to further increase the allocation for a possible surge of patients. Kailangan talaga natin on the ground na ready talaga tayo for any kind of eventuality, ano? Kasi hindi natin alam kung uh, ano mangyari dito after mga 2 to 3 months. Pero ang maganda nga yung, yung metrics ngayon kasi para may gradual decrease na ngayon sa lalo ng lalo na sa Metro Manila at ibang mga probinsya. Meanwhile, the OHCC has recorded a 94% resolution for the calls they received since it started its operation on August 6. 64% of the calls seek referrals of corresponding facilities for confirmed COVID-19 cases with mild, moderate, or critical condition, while 33% are suspect cases and the remaining 3% are probable cases. As head of the OHCC, Dr. Vega explains the success is attributed to the additional call center in the OHCC. Napalakas din dahil meron na po kaming dalawang call centers at mas marami na rin mga medical coordinators na nasa MMDA platforms na pwede din tugunan ang mga pasyente na nangailangan sa ng hospital sa saka temporary treatment facility o even testing. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Private school teachers and provisional teachers who have lost their jobs due to non-renewal of contract have the chance to apply as learning support aides. Dante Amento tells us why. The Department of Education allows its school's division offices to identify the number of learning support aides or LSAs they will be hiring this coming school year. The learning support aides will assist the teachers in guiding the learners or parents on the delivery of learning modalities. They will also help teachers in preparing and delivering lessons and in monitoring the learners' progress and achievement. Ang unang-una po is to support the teachers and parents para sa pag ng basic education na services doon sa mga learners natin in this new normal. Pangalawa po, uh, itatap natin yung potential qualified individuals among households within the community. Let me emphasize within the community para sa ganoon ma-prevent natin yung transmission. To be qualified, an applicant must be at least a senior high school graduate or completed at least two years in college, at least 21 years old but not older than 59 and preferably residing in the community where the school is located. No training, experience and eligibility are required. DepEd says it will prioritize applicants who are provisional teachers and lost their jobs due to the non-renewal of contract. Private school teachers, especially those who became unemployed as a result of the temporary closure of some private schools due to the pandemic. Interested applicants may contact or visit the nearest DepEd school's division office and submit the requirements. All qualified applicants will undergo an assessment and selection process. So, usapin naman ng compensation, Ang tinitignan po natin dito ay uh, uh, nasa halagang 6,000 to 11,000 kasi po ito yung minimum daily wage rate set by the National Wage Productivity Commission. Iba-iba po yan. Compensation will be from 6,000 to 11,000 pesos or depending on the minimum daily wage rate per area. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 
as the end of general community quarantine status at Metro Manila nears, the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, said it is in favor of shifting to modified general community quarantine, or MGCQ. In today's Senate Committee on Finance hearing on the 2021 proposed budget of the agency, Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez said he proposed to the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases the shifting to a more relaxed quarantine restriction to allow the reopening of sectors and the return of more workers. But Lopez clarified there will be no easing of enforcement of safety protocols and minimum health standards the only thing that we'd like to change really is the easing up or reopening of more uh, sectors for the workers because i'm just concerned on the on the uh, poverty also on the hunger para po may trabaho mga kababayan According to the secretary, he also favors retaining the GCQ status in Metro Manila, but he appeals to allow the 100% operational capacity in several sectors that are still operating with 50% capacity under GCQ. These include sectors under the Category 3, such as legal and accounting firms, management consultancy, advertising, and services in the film industry. Lopez says there were four 4.4 billion unemployed Filipinos to date, 2.2 billion of which are from the micro, small, and medium enterprises or MSMEs affected by the pandemic. The DTI says 90,000 businesses remained closed as of September out of the 1.4 billion MSMEs across the country. Lopez noted that the number is lower compared from the 38% MSMEs that closed down from April to May because some of the businesses are now reopening via online platforms. Under the Bayanihan 2, 10 billion pesos has been allotted to DTI Small Business Corporation for its COVID-19 assistance to restart enterprises or CARES program that aims to provide loans to MSMEs that are affected by the pandemic. According to SB Corporation, 15,000 borrowers have benefited from the 1 billion pesos that was earlier allocated for the program. The corporation aims to help 15,000 to 18,000 borrowers per month starting October. The House of Representatives begins the plenary deliberation of the proposed national budget for 2021. On the other hand, more lawmakers signed a manifest supporting the current leadership. Ray Palayo will tell us why. Debates on the 4.5 trillion peso proposed budget for next year have begun in the House of Representatives plenary. Albay Representative Joey Salceda, who is sponsored the general principles and provisions of the House Bill 7727 or the 2021 General Appropriations Bill, said that the allocation are enough to support the economy and health programs that will help the country get back on its feet as it battles the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Salceda said that the proposed budget includes 440 billion pesos for infrastructure which is so far the biggest compared with past allocations. The deliberation is scheduled until October 7. The bill is expected to be signed into law by the President before the year ends. Meanwhile, Anakalusugan Party List Representative Mike Defensor and Surigao del Norte Representative Robert Barbers confirmed that a manifesto is now circulating among lawmakers from the majority bloc. This is to support the leadership of Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano. Under sa kanyang leadership ay gumanda ang imahe, tumaas ang rating, at tingin sa lahat ay uh, marami tayong uh, panukalang patas na naipasa na sangayon sa legislative agenda ng ating Pangulo. Barbers clarifies that he did not notice in the manifesto the inclusion of the term sharing between Cayetano and Marinduque Representative Alan J. Velasco. Kung mayroong palitan man o wala sa ating palagay, ay wala pa rin sigurong uh, magiging epekto ito sa performance ng Kongreso dahil pangkalahatan ito ng mga performance ito hindi naman ito nakaangla lamang sa isang tao. The minority bloc has also signed a manifesto to show support to Cayetano's leadership. On the other hand, Marinduque Representative Alan J. Velasco says in a statement 
that term sharing agreement should be observed especially this was done before President Rodrigo Duterte. Velasco notes that the 15-month term of Cayetano will end on September 30 and his 21-month term should start immediately. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Senate has approved on second reading a bill that seeks to establish a COCO Levy Trust Fund. Senate Bill No. 1396, also known as the Coconut Formers and Industry Trust Fund Act, aims to consolidate the benefits due to coconut farmers, especially the poor and the marginalized. The use of the trust fund shall be in accordance with a coconut farmers and industry development plan, which shall be prepared by the Philippine Coconut Authority or PCA and approved by the President. The bill adds the plan should set the directions and policies for the development and rehabilitation of the coconut industry within 50 years. Senate is, a, is set to finally vote on the measure on Monday next week. Bicol Region anticipates another airport to open come May of next year. The Regional Development Council hopes for more jobs to be created for Bicolanos through the project. One of our correspondents in Bicol, Alan Manantala, will tell us why. Ligaspi City Albay Mayor Noel Rosal hopes that the Bicol International Airport project will be completed and opened by May 2021. Mayor Rosal, the Regional Development Council Chairman, says that although the project construction is quite delayed, it is progressing. Dapat December this year yan. Mm -hmm. Pero ngayong May, sana tuloy-tuloy na to. Mayor Rosal adds that the airport's main terminal and landing system have yet to be completed. The airport's construction has taken about 12 years and has cost the government 6 billion pesos. The anticipated international airport located in the town of Daraga, which is a neighbor of Albay's capital, Ligaspi City, may take another three months to be completed. Mayor Rosal is positive the 10,000 square meter Bicol International Airport will generate jobs for Bicolanos as well as improve the region's tourism and economy. Alan Manansala, UNTV News and Rescue Albay. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalong ensures the safety of tourists and visitors when the city of Pines reopens for tourism on October 1. This is despite the more than 40 cases in the city. Mayor Magalong emphasizes that tours will be guided. Ulitin mo namin na ang pagpunta po ng turista rito during the first month or probably a succeeding week a guided tour Ibig sabihin nung hindi ko sila basta-basta pwede pumunta ay saan. Yung tinatawag po natin na DIY tourist, yung do-it-yourself tourist, wala pa po yan. Bawal pa po yan dito. But for the same time, kailangan po guided to ang mangyayari. The mayor adds that in time, in that in the first month of their reopening, tourism activities will be closely monitored for future adjustments or improvements. Our system is dynamic. Kung nakikita namin na manageable, yung 200 days a week end, increase it. Gradually. Kung nagkaroon ng outbreak, then stop. Pull back kami. Atras kami ng konti, bawasan natin. O kaya hindi natin. Depende sa present na situation. The LTFRB will open 12 bus routes within four provinces, neighboring Metro Manila on September 30. But the number of bus units entering those provinces will, will be limited. Joan Nano tells us why. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB will open 12 routes for provincial buses in Pampanga, Cavite, Batangas and Laguna this coming Wednesday, September 30. But because the local governments still have to manage coronavirus cases in their towns and cities, the number of bus units as well as passengers entering those provinces will be limited. Despite these, there will be no fare increase for those provincial bus routes. Under LTFRB's Memorandum Circular 2020, 
20-051, the fare in non-air conditioned buses is 9 pesos for every first 5 kilometers, an additional 1 peso and 55 centavos for every succeeding kilometer. While for air conditioned buses, passengers will be charged for succeeding kilometer starting 1 peso and 75 centavos up to 2 pesos and 40 centavos. The LTFRB vows to provide fuel subsidy to the operators of provincial buses and other modes of land transportation in accordance with the Bayanihan 2 law. Siyempre, tinitignan din mo natin yung sitwasyon po ng ating mga pasahero din, ano? Um, even in the other modes na binuksan natin, hindi po natin na in-increasean ang ating uh, pamasahe even with the reduced um, capacity. The OTR and the LTFRB are trying to um, find ways to help as well uh, our operators in um, other uh, programs or projects po. No? May mga fuel subsidy ho na pinag-uusapan under Bayanihan uh, Act The mandatory wearing of face mask and face shield on public transport continues. Eating, talking and answering calls are prohibited on provincial buses. The loading and unloading of passengers will be allowed only at designated stopover points or bus terminals. The LTFRB says that local governments have the prerogative to suspend or decrease the number of trips within their jurisdictions in case the number of COVID-19 cases increases. The health department welcomes the opening of new sectors as the country's economy needs to recover from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, but the DOH emphasizes that COVID-19 cases should be strictly monitored to prevent further transmission. We are very appreciative of the other government agencies because every time they make decisions, they always consider would be health, of course. We need to monitor what will be the result of this pandemic in sector so we know what we will do in the future. Johanna no UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Now, here's a glimpse of what's the weather like in parts of the country. The southwest monsoon or hanging habagat is affecting parts of the country. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says this will bring cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Palawan. Meanwhile, the frontal system will cause cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Batanes and Babuyan Islands. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to southwest monsoon or localized thunderstorms. Possible flash floods or landslides may occur during severe thunderstorms. No tropical cyclone advisory is issued. Another individual who authorities say is the trusted aide of Abu Sayyaf Commander Mundi Sawadjaan has been arrested. According to the PNC chief, this is a huge blow to Swajaan's group. Lea Ilagan details why. The PNP Regional Intelligence Unit 9 and the 84th Special Action Company arrested the trusted aid of terrorist Mundi Swajaan, identified as Hashim Saripada alias Ibn Kashir. Authorities nabbed Saripada in Barangay Ricodo, Sambuanga yesterday at about 6.30 in the morning. The arrest is based on a warrant of arrest for multiple murder and multiple frustrated murder cases. According to PNP Chief Police General Camilo Cascolan, Saripada plays a big role in a travel of Moroccan suicide bomber Abu Kathir Al Magrigbi from Sulu to the Kafgu detachment in situ Magkawit Barangay Maganda Lamitan Basilan to execute a bombing by a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device on July 31, 2018. Eleven people were killed in that bombing. Authorities say that Saripada and Mundi Sawadjaan prepared the IED used by the Indonesian couple suicide bomber in Mount Carmel Cathedral in Hulo, Sulu on January 27, 2019, wherein 23 people were killed and 100 others were wounded. Intelligence Group Director, Police Brigadier General Edgar Monsalve revealed that Saripada had been under the surveillance of PNP operatives before he was captured. Pangyari yung Lamitan Basila, yung Lamitan Bami, ito po si Saripada ay uh, dahil alam niya 
na hahabulin na siya ng mga security forces, umalis po ito ng Basila na pumunta po siya ng Sulo. Nagtago po ito sa isang island sa Sulo at dahil nga po, paulit-ulit na sinasabi ng ating CPNP na you reach out again to the community. At yun nga po ang nangyari, mayroon pong mga kapatid natin sa community na nagbigay ng informasyon na cited ito uli si Saripada sa Sambuanga. Monsalve adds, they are still identifying if Saripada has a plan to execute a terroristic activity in Sambuanga because the operatives found a hand grenade and other materials used in bomb making such as detonating cord. General Cascolan said that the arrest of Saripada is a big blow to Sawadjaan's group. Saripada is the assistant cohort of uh, Sawadjaan, Mundi Sawadjaan. This will be a very, very big uh, blow on him because nawalan siya ng isang pinagkakatiwalaan and this one is actually his assistant event. So, karamihan ng kanyang mga activities ngayon na kwan siya, uh, hindi na matutuloy because of that. And he knows, he knows na minomonitor na siya ng lahat ng intelligence and anti-terrorism units. Last week, authorities arrested the recruiter of another terrorist group, Daula Islamia, who is said to have a connection to Mundi Sawadjaan, Ibrahim Abdullah Madrinan. General Cascolan said they will improve their intelligence group who will lead the PNP's campaigns against terrorism. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad, here's Maria Latosa reporting live from Perth, Australia. William, from today, 28th of September, people in England are required by law to self-isolate if they test positive for coronavirus disease. Any offender will face fines that start at £1,000, rising to £10,000 for uh, egregious offences and serial offenders. The new rule also includes people contacted by the test and trace system as having been in contact with an infected person. More police resources will also be directed to find offenders in high-incidence areas and officers will be told to act on tips from neighbors. People on low incomes who cannot work and are losing income while self-isolating will be able to get a 500 euro payment. As British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said, he doesn't want to see a situation where people don't feel they are financially able to self-isolate. The move is implemented in a bid to control the spread of the virus and to prevent the most vulnerable people from becoming infected and to protect the NHS and save lives, according to Prime Minister Johnson. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases in countries worst hit by the pandemic. COVID-19 cases in the United States further rose to more than 7.1 million today, while its death toll increases to almost 205,000, still the highest among countries turned upside down by the killer virus. Also today, hard-hit India passes 6 million cases after authorities announced a further 82,170 or 70 recorded cases. Experts see that new infections are rising faster in India than anywhere else around the globe. It remains in the second spot worldwide for cases and there are fears it could soon surpass the U.S. Meanwhile, Colombia and Peru both surpass the 800,000 mark based on new data. Australia's pandemic budget for 2020 to 2021 will focus on putting people back to jobs. One of our fellow correspondents here in Australia, Early Bionis, will join us tonight to give the details why live. Yes, Early. Marielle, 760,000 jobs have been regained in Australia from the 1.3 million jobs lost since the pandemic hit the country early this year. Australia Prime Minister Scott Morrison believes that the country will recover from the economic impact of the pandemic through strong job creations and support. 
which will help alleviate the country's 85.3 billion Australian dollars budget deficit. Here is part of Prime Minister Morrison's National Cabinet speech. Australia is the envy in many respects of so many other countries around the world and how we are managing both the health consequences of the COVID pandemic and the economic consequences of the COVID pandemic. This was brought home again this week uh, by the employment figures that came out yesterday. I mean, these are employment numbers that have seen more than half now, more than half of the jobs lost come back. That's good news. Australia's 2020 to 2021 budget is expected to be released on October 6. And according to Prime Minister Morrison, it is designed to ensure the country comes out of COVID-19 recession with millions of jobs in the country. Prime Minister Morrison further stated that the world is expected to have an economic fall by 4.5% for the first time, way more than the 0.1% economic contraction experienced during the global financial crisis between mid 2007 and 2009. Back to you, Thank you, Early, live from Perth or Australia. Australia has pledged to share with the world any discoveries and breakthroughs made in its three local COVID-19 vaccine trials. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison also strongly warns world leaders of a global responsibility to share a COVID-19 cure in his address at the United Nations General Assembly. Joining us tonight is one of our fellow correspondents in Australia, Marvi Delphine, to tell us why live. Yes, Marvi. Marielle, Australia has pledged to share with the world any discoveries and breakthroughs made in its three local COVID-19 vaccine trials, which was addressed by Prime Minister Scott Morrison in his virtual speech at the 75th United Nations General Assembly on Saturday. Standing in front of the Sydney Harbour, Prime Minister Morrison also urged countries to share a COVID-19 vaccine as soon as there is a successful candidate, signifying such collaboration as a global and moral responsibility. Let us hear what Prime Minister Morrison had to say on the online UN stage. In Southeast Asia, we're also providing much needed equipment and expertise as well as supporting collaboration to develop a vaccine. And we've contributed $80 million to the Gavi COVAX advanced market commitment. When it comes to a vaccine, Australia's view is very clear. Whoever finds the vaccine must share it. This is a global responsibility and it's a moral responsibility for a vaccine to be shared far and wide. In his pre-recorded video, Prime Minister Morrison also highlighted the dangers of disinformation insisting on the need to identify the zoonotic source of the novel coronavirus and how it was transmitted to humans. Amid growing tensions and worsening relations with China, Prime Minister Morrison defended the Australian-led efforts and support for WHO's investigation in China's handling of the COVID-19 outbreak. Marielle? Marvi, Australia's stance on COVID-19 vaccine sure looks promising, but on a different note, it was reported that China's heavily contested territorial claims in the Indo-Pacific was also addressed by the Australian Prime Minister in his virtual speech at the UN General Assembly. Can you elaborate on this? Yes, Marielle, not only did Prime Minister Morrison discuss about Australia's fight against the deadly virus, but he also delivered comments referring to the increasing militarization of the South China Sea without mentioning the superpower by name. Prime Minister Morrison said, we value rules that protect sovereignty, peace and security and curb the excessive use of power. 
This includes ensuring that competing territorial and maritime claims are based on and determined in line with international law, including the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. As we have seen in July, Australia wrote a letter to the United Nations formally declaring that Beijing's territorial claims in the South China Sea had no legal basis and were inconsistent with international law. We are yet to see how the South China Sea situation will unfold as China's President Xi Jinping did not acknowledge this in his UN speech but instead defended his country's response to the coronavirus pandemic. Marielle? All right, thank you, Marvi Delphine, for that update on Australia's vaccine pledge. The decision to accept the recusal calls is ultimately up to Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett, whatever she will interfere with the election-related cases. One of our U.S. correspondents, Sonny Cos, will tell us why. U.S. Democrats urge Supreme Court nominee Amy Connie Barrett to recuse herself from election-related cases because of the possibility of a biased election. But the decision is ultimately up to Judge Barrett. This comes as President Donald Trump expects the justices in the Supreme Court to decide the outcome of the election. President Trump continues to attack the mail-in balloting, which is why he highlights the importance of having nine judges in court. A few days ago, the U.S. Chief Executive nominated Judge Barrett as a replacement for Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg after her death on September 18. If she is confirmed by the U.S. Senate, which is controlled by the Republicans, Barrett would give the court a 6-3 conservative majority. Sonicos, UN TV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news here in Australia and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, Mariella Toza, reporting live from Perth, Australia. It was music overload last night for the fans of Singing Brothers Brands. Mirasola Bogadil will tell us why. Guys, baksakan na! Eto na! Let's go! More than 15,000 Brad's followers partied with singing brothers Shad, JC, and Chris during their virtual concert Sunday night via communication app Connect. This was in celebration of their 8th anniversary. The hashtag Brad's Aniv concert also peaked at the 4th spot of Twitter's trending list. Brad's performed songs that influenced them greatly. They also collaborated with top OPM acts like Barbie Almalbis, The Itchy Worms, former River Maya frontman Jason Fernandez, and the Philippines busking queen Eloisa J. Brads also shared their plan two years ago of shelving their music career because they felt that it was going nowhere. At that lowest point, may biglang dumating sa atin, may unexpected call, isang malang sorpresa, sorpresa, isang malaking blessing. Tumawag sa atin yung BMPI. So nyo bang mag-sign ng management contract? Naaalala ko lang noon, ang sinagot ko, yes, opo. Ayan. Alam namin na yun yung tugon ng Diyos na gusto namin ma- Brads also performed their newest and yet to be released single, Wish Girl. According to Brads, their wish is to make more songs and share them to more people in the future. Uh. 
Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. To God be the glory. Mirasol Abogadi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 28, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I am Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people, we give glory to God.